If you're new here, welcome, and if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. Today's video is going to be my part two of Best of Beauty for 2021. My part one was all skincare, so if you guys are interested in that, I'll have a link down below and in the cards above so that you can watch it after this video. These videos are always a bit lengthy, so without further ado, let's just jump right into it. We'll start out with my makeup favorites. For my base makeup, if I do use primer, I only use one, and that's the Tatcha the Silk Canvas Primer. This is like a little mini deluxe size. You really don't need that much. You only need a little bit because if you use too much, I find that it doesn't actually work that well. This really just smoothens out the base. It really fills in the pores, but it doesn't make it look dry, which I noticed with a lot of other pore filling primers. It's not the best look in my opinion. I already have really dry skin, so that's not gonna work for me. I just love how my base makeup applies on top of this product. It just makes my skin Skin looks so smooth and silky, hence the name Silk Canvas. I actually don't use this every single day. I usually use it either on days that I'm going to be wearing my makeup for a really, really long time. So if I'm out on like vacation or something or any whole day excursions, if I'm doing my makeup for the evening, I usually take off the sunscreen that I put on in the morning and just apply this on top of my moisturizer. I won't say this is super mattifying, but it's great for you guys who want a somewhat natural finish, but still want to have a little bit more of a perfected look, especially in the middle of your face and your T-Zone. For foundations, I have three to show you guys, and I guess we'll go in the order of affordability. The first one that I have is no surprise. This is the Ordinary Coverage Foundation. I have it in the shade 2Y, I believe. I have loved using this foundation for, I think this is like the third year now that I've used it. It wears so nicely on the skin, even throughout the day, even when I'm wearing my mask, which is really surprising. It's super affordable too. I'm pretty sure it's like around $10 or under $10, at least the time that I bought it. Don't get confused between the serum foundation. I actually don't really like that foundation, but I love the coverage one. The shade range is also pretty good as well. This foundation, even though it's so affordable, has worked so much better than a lot of other high-end foundations that I've tried in the past. If you want a high-quality formula and don't want to spend a lot on a foundation, this is the way to go. Next up on the price point range is the M Cosmetics Daydream Cushion. This is actually considered a tinted SPF cushion. If you guys didn't know, I was actually M Cosmetics ambassador for the first half of 2021. So this video, of course, isn't sponsored, but I did get a chance to try out a bunch of M Cosmetics products because of that and I absolutely love this cushion. You guys already know my love for skincare and I just feel like M Cosmetics incorporates a lot of skincare values in their makeup. And of course, we love a good SPF. I don't use this specifically for my SPF though. This is great for reapplication, but I actually use this just as a regular cushion foundation. Very few US-based or Western-based brands have cushion foundations and I love how M Cosmetics has a pretty good shade range. It's not super extensive, but it's also not meant to be an exact shade match. This is more of a light coverage foundation, so it definitely does even the skin but it's not super heavy and it still allows some imperfections to show through. It just looks so natural, it feels lightweight, it has SPF, and because it's a cushion foundation, you can pop out the cushion and just refill it every single time that you're done with it. Look, like this. The packaging is also super slim, so you can slip it in your bag for reapplication if you want to use it that way. It also applies pretty well on top of other foundations. So the most expensive product that I want to talk about today is the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Perfect Glow Flawless Foundation. This is super hyped up. I've seen it everywhere. I've seen it on YouTube for like the past five, six years, and I've never gotten a chance to try it because it's just so pricey, and I'm like... Is it really worth that money? I actually picked it up during the Sephora sale when I was in the US about like six months ago. And let me tell you, this is the perfect night foundation. It makes your skin look so nice, especially in photos. It gives this natural satin-like finish that's also like picture perfect. I've tried out a lot of bougie foundations as well, and this is by far the best one. I'm not gonna say you absolutely need this because you don't really need any of these things. And if you really want a foundation that you can wear every single day and didn't want to spend a lot of money on, the other two options that I mentioned before are also great but if you're like a makeup enthusiast or you know someone who's a makeup enthusiast or you just like trying out foundations and want to see what the hype is about I'm here to tell you that as a beauty enthusiast myself the hype is real at least for me this is definitely the best high-end foundation that I've ever tried they also have a pretty good shade selection as well for concealers, these are two that I use every single day. One of them I'm almost running out of and I'm really sad. This one is the Kosas Revealer Concealer. I have it in the shade 4. This is my favorite under eye concealer. I would say it's pretty creamy and moisturizing, so I'm not really sure how it will work on oily skin types, but for my really dry skin and even for people who have normal skin types, I feel like this would work really well. It doesn't make my under eyes look super cakey. I don't use that much of it. Maybe like a dot or two underneath both of my eyes. It helps brighten my under eyes because it can get a little bit dark due to my poor sleeping habits 
habits. Kosas is also one of those skincare slash makeup brands. Their makeup products usually have a lot of skincare ingredients or benefits to them. This one includes caffeine, which helps brighten the under eyes. It also has hyaluronic acid, which helps plump up the under eyes as well. A couple other products too. I believe it also has panthenol to help with blemishes. I mainly use this as an under eye concealer and I definitely recommend it if you don't want your under eyes to look super cakey and also have normal to dry skin like me. The next one I use as a face concealer and this is the Stretch Concealer from Glossier and I have it in shade G9. This is just a lightweight pot concealer. I like using pot concealers on the rest of my face just in case I have like a blemish or some redness or hyperpigmentation that I want to neutralize a little bit. It's not full coverage. It's definitely a light coverage concealer but it's usually for those days that I don't really want to wear a lot of makeup which is honestly most days especially when I'm not filming. I use this a lot on the sides of my face where I get rosacea. It helps even it out really nicely. For face powders, I have two that I've been using for a while now. The first one is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Complexion Perfecting Micro Powder. This is, I think, probably my favorite Charlotte Tilbury product that I've tried so far. It's a pressed powder, but it's a super, super fine powder, so I mainly use this on my under eyes. I got it in the shade number one fair because I wanted that brightening effect, and I heard that this powder is especially good for people with really dry skin, so it doesn't make your skin overly matte. Really matte powders underneath your eyes can lead to a really cakey look. That's not something that I was going for. I usually use this powder underneath my eyes with a damp beauty sponge and it applies so nicely. It sets my Kosas concealer really well, so that combo is something that I've been using all this year. As for a loose powder, I usually use this all over my face, especially in the summer months. And this is an old favorite, but still really good and affordable. It's the Innisfree No Sebum Mineral Powder, or No Sebum. I know in Korea they call it Sebum. This is just a regular translucent powder. Nothing to complain about this. I've been using this for a super long time. They recently, I guess, changed their packaging and it looks a lot more modern and sleek. I find this pretty similar to the Laura Mercier powder. I also really like that one, but this is definitely a more affordable option, especially for those of you guys who are still students. I mean, I'm not a student anymore, but I really can't tell a super big difference between using this and the Laura Mercier one. This is also a good multi-use powder because you can plop it in your bag, use it throughout the day, especially if you're oily, and you can also kind of use it as a dry shampoo too. You just dab a little bit of the powder on your roots and just work it in so that it absorbs the extra oil. I think I got this for the first time in high school and that was like six, almost seven years ago. Definitely try this out if for some reason you haven't gotten around to doing that yet. As for face color cosmetics, this is the blush that I've been using ever since I got it in I think March. This is the M Cosmetics Heaven's Glow Blush in Magic Hour. I have this blush in the other colors as well, Venetian Glow. This is the most wearable for my skin tone all throughout the year. It's super pretty, it has a nice sheen to it, and I've been really liking glowy blushes this year. Just everything glowy, you know? I don't like that super, super matte look anymore. It's also pretty easy to use. It's still pigmented, but it's not super, super pigmented to the point where you dab the brush in a little bit and you get like a whole splotch of pink on your cheeks. It's also super easy to blend out too. I find that this wears pretty well throughout the day. I still feel like I have blush on at the end of the day even though I put it on in the morning. It gives my face a nice glow but it doesn't look too over the top. If I want to highlight my cheekbones or the inner corners of my eyes or anywhere else that I want to highlight, I've been liking a natural highlight and this is the one from Laura Mercier. It's the Matte Radiance Baked Powder in the shade 1. This is also one of those like deluxe size product so it's not the full size but you really don't need that much from it the full size is i think like maybe two-thirds bigger than this it has such a nice natural sheen it's not glittery which i'm not really into the glittery highlights anymore especially for a daytime look like it can be fun every once in a while at night but at least for the makeup look that i'm going for i like it when it has a nice glowy shimmery sheen to it this highlight gives me exactly that i actually started using it in the u.s and i just found out six months ago this is really popular with makeup artists in korea as well i guess this highlight is just popular with anyone who likes a natural makeup look it can be a little pricey but this is literally the only highlight i use and i've been using it for like two three years now still works really well. As for a contour shade, this is a contour shade that I've been using for a while now and it's from Makeup Forever. I love Makeup Forever products, especially their powder products and this is one of the contour shades. I forgot the name of it. I'll have it linked down below so you guys know what it is. It's a little bit orangey so it gives like a bronzer slash contour vibe to it which is kind of what I was going for. I have other cool tone shades that I use for like a really contoured look but I usually like a soft natural makeup look so I tend to not go for those as often. I usually 
usually apply this to the sides of my face and the temples just so it adds a little bit more dimension to my face especially if I am wearing foundation it has a really nice glow it's not too over the top I also sometimes like to use this as an eyeshadow as well most importantly for a contour shade you really need the powders to blend very well and all of makeup forever's powders blend super nicely the next category is eye makeup and I have quite a lot of experience in this and I feel like a lot of the eye makeup that I tried in the past doesn't like to stay in place on my eyes and like to smudge everywhere. Not anymore, I don't have the problem with these products. First thing I want to talk about is an eyebrow pencil and this is the Petty Petta Skinny Brow and this is in the shade number 3 Natural Brown. These skinny brow pencils are my favorite. I've tried the angled ones and I just don't like how they're not as precise. I feel like you can't really draw hair like strokes with them or you have to like tilt it at a certain angle which is too much for me. I just got used to using the skinny ones. I used to buy a lot of the other ones from Western brands, and honestly, I really like their shades, but it can get pretty pricey, which is why I always waited them to go on like 50% off to be on sale so I can buy three at a time. These skinny brow pencils really don't last that long, especially if you're using them every single day. This one from Petty Petta though is super, super affordable, even compared to a lot of K-Beauty makeup. Like if I go to Olive Young, I'm pretty sure this is the most affordable, popular brow pencil. I wanna say it's like around 5,000 won, so around like $5 USD. I could be wrong though, but definitely under $10. There's really nothing much to say about it. I'm using it on my eyebrows today. Super nice, long lasting, very, very similar to a lot of brow products that are on the Western market. Definitely recommend if you do like these skinny brow pencils. For eyeshadows, the first one I have is my favorite, honestly, any ColourPop palette or their pressed shadows. This is the one palette that I brought with me. Actually, that's a lie. The next product that I'll talk about is also a palette, but this is the only big eyeshadow palette that I brought with me. I literally got rid of all of my old makeup palettes, all of my old eyeshadow palettes that were really big, basically the size or maybe like a little bit smaller. I used to be obsessed with collecting them, but I realized I don't use most of those shades and I just wear neutral tones all the time. If I want to wear a bright pop of color. I'll probably just get a single shadow for that. But this is the Bare Necessities palette from ColourPop. I find that their eyeshadow quality is superb. Like, I have still yet to find someone to top them at their price point. I also really like the Disney Princess ColourPop eyeshadow palette, but that one is, I think, discontinued, so I'm not gonna link that down below. This includes all of the colors that I usually like. I actually did drop it. A lot of the colors are not in the spots that they're supposed to be, but it's okay. I don't really use the names that often. I had my fun collecting eyeshadow palettes, but this is the only big one that I have now, and I think I'll like to keep it that way. The next eyeshadow palette that I have is the M Cosmetics Divine Skies eyeshadow palette, also in Magic Hour. So I do really like Magic Hour from M Cosmetics. Probably one of my favorite collections. This is a super, super basic eyeshadow palette. It's pretty small, so it's great for traveling if I go anywhere or if I want to put it in my bag to touch up throughout the day. Not throughout the day, but if I'm wearing my makeup for a long time, I'll probably bring this to touch up any sort of creases that I might have. I literally use all these shades, so I know that every single shade is going to be put into use. They have other colorways of this as well. I think the same as the blush, the Venetian Rose, and the Faded Clementine. I think I actually said Tangerine earlier. I didn't mean that. I meant Faded Clementine. The eyeshadow quality is also very good for this, but I think overall, if I had to choose, I'd still choose the ColourPop eyeshadow quality. This is just super convenient and the packaging is very nice as well. Comes with a mirror too so you don't have to bring an extra mirror. Just want to do a quick shout out to the eyelash curler that I use. The Shu Urimura one is the best for almond shaped eyes because it really gets into the crevices and curls every single lash. The Shiseido one is also pretty good as well, but I still prefer the Shu Urimura one. If you have a hard time finding a lash curler that fits your eye shape and you also have almond eyes, try this out if you haven't already. There's a reason why it's so popular. For eyeliner, I'm very, very specific on what I want in an eyeliner, and it has to be a liquid eyeliner, and it has to be a brush tip. No fill tips here, only brush tips. I can only do a sharp line when it is with a brush tip liquid liner. This is one from Kiss Me Hair and Make. You know, I love this brand for all of their eye makeup. It literally doesn't budge. When it says it's waterproof, it's actually waterproof. This is one of the only eyeliners that actually stays on my eyes and doesn't smudge throughout the day. I don't want to look like a raccoon in the middle of the day. I have this in the black shade. I have this in the brown shade. I just continue buying this over and over again and for good reason. Mascara, you guys probably heard me talk about this a lot. It's also from Kiss Me. This is the Hero and Make Long and Curl Mascara. I like the long one more than the volume one. I heard they're both good. I've tried the volume one before, but I just like the length that the long one gives me. This one also doesn't budge throughout the day. It's actually pretty hard to take off, so I have to use a separate lip and eye makeup remover, which I talked about my favorite one on my Best of Beauty skincare. Go watch it after this. And it actually holds the curl because my eyelashes are naturally pretty straight, so any mascara that helps it 
that stay curled up throughout the day is always always super helpful if you don't want to use a waterproof mascara like that or you want something a little bit more low maintenance when it comes to removing your makeup my favorite mascara that's still easy to use but doesn't smudge on me throughout the day which is honestly really really hard to find is the glossy lash slick this is a tubing mascara so it has little fibers that wrap around each eyelash and for some reason this is one of the few tubing mascaras that doesn't smudge on me I just went along with it and I've been buying this ever since I tried it three years ago four years ago it's been a while but this is literally the only other mascara that I use besides the kiss me one you can also literally just wash this off with water it comes off pretty easily I really tried to narrow down the lip makeup products, but I still have four to show you. The first one is a lip liner from M Cosmetics. This is in the shade Kitten, and it's the Soft Blur Velvet Lip Liner. This lip liner is really similar to my natural lip color. I usually use it on days where I'm using like a more matte lip or something not super glossy, or if I want to make my lips look a little bit more full. I also really like the color of this, because if I fill in my lips with this color, it kind of gives uh, my lips a better sort of look to it. It's also super creamy and blendable. It literally just glides right onto your lips they do have a good amount of shades for this product so it can be easier to find the lip liner that corresponds to your natural lip color speaking of M Cosmetics I still love the M Cosmetics true gloss in Moroccan sunset I'll literally apply this on right now so I usually don't apply this on as one thick layer I mean you can but that's just not what I usually do with it it's pretty pigmented it has like a orangey red tint to it so it kind of gives you a red lip look I usually use like a little bit on the insides of my lips and just use a finger or a q-tip to dab it out kind of to sheer out the color it looks like your lips are naturally just moisturized and has a little tint to them it's not super glossy either especially you do a sheer wash of it so that's usually how I like to wear it I really like how it doesn't emphasize any sort of fine lines it doesn't make my lips look really dry because it is a gloss I think I mentioned this in my last year favorites and it's still on my favorites this year the next one is also a gloss so I guess this year was just the year of lip glosses this is the Hera spicy nude gloss in the shade 422 lingerie this is really popular in Korea I got this at Sephora in Korea never mind I think it was sold out at the Sephora I got it at department store at the Hera counter I love the shade of it it's definitely more on the pinky side usually more pinky than what I go for I usually gravitate more towards brick or orangey red colors like the Moroccan sunset gloss that I'm wearing right now but I do really like this and it kind of has a nice tingling effect that plumps up your lips just slightly last but not least I have a lip oil and this is from in beauty this is the lip glaze number one it has like a nice sheer red color this is definitely a my lips are better it has a nice tint to it but it's not super over the top I also find that it's not super super glossy which I like glosses, but I don't like things that are too glossy, if you know what I mean. I usually wear this on more of the no makeup makeup days. Or if I just want to do a quick makeup look so that I look refreshed, I put on my concealer, my brows, and this lip oil. I'm pretty sure you can buy In Beauty off Sephora now. When I got this, I don't even think they were in Sephora yet. It's a testament to how good their products are, especially these lip oils. I tried a couple of other lip oils, I think two other ones, and this one is still my favorite, especially because of the tint. I think I touched upon body products a little bit in my best of skincare video, but I wanted to do a more extensive version here. The one that I mentioned there was all of necessary products, but specifically, I really like their body lotion and their body wash, as well as this body serum that I have right here. Those are the three products that I've used the most of. The body wash, I've already used two bottles, and I'm waiting to go back to the US to get my third bottle because I don't know if they really sell it in Korea, but I know they for sure sell it at Sephora in the US. I really love this body serum serum specifically because I think it's nice to use this when you don't want to use the body lotion you want something that sinks in quicker this is really nice to apply first and once it's penetrated into the skin you can lock it all in with the body lotion they actually already changed the packaging I believe it's like a slightly skinnier bottle and it's taller but it's the same product this is a really nice hyaluronic acid serum you could also use this on your face as well this and the body lotion are fragrance free I'm pretty sure this only comes in the fragrance free version and the body lotion comes in the fragrance fragrance version as well as the fragrance free same goes for the body wash I love all necessary products I think they're really really good you know it's good but you can also use it on your face as well definitely going to be stocking up on more of these once I'm done using them as for another body product when my skin is feeling super 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 dry so basically like right now during the winter time I like to go in with a body oil and this one is from Osea this is the Undaria algae body oil so this one it doesn't look like I use that much which is funny because I feel like I use 
used a lot of this maybe because I only use like one pump every time I use it but it smells so so good not only that it's also super moisturizing for the skin I feel like it's very rich yet it sinks to the skin a lot quicker than a lot of other body oils that I've tried so it's still on the more lightweight side if you want to do like a really really good combo you can apply the serum first the body lotion next and then the oil afterwards yes I think that's the best combo of course it seems like a little unnecessary but if you really need it the thing with body oils though is that if I'm going to get into bed right afterwards I don't want to use the body oil so I'll opt for the serum or the body lotion but sometimes it's nice to use this and it feels very luxurious as well in the summer my body gets really irritated sometimes especially if I spend a lot of time in the Sun even though I do apply sunscreen but it can still get kind of inflamed so I like to go in with my favorite aloe vera at the moment this is the aromatica soothing aloe vera gel this is the most popular aloe vera in Korea at the moment and I just loved using this especially during the summertime as you can see I almost finished the bottle this summer it's just so lightweight and soothing sometimes I still use this if I have any areas of my body that's super inflamed you can also use this on your face as well it's always nice to have a good aloe vera gel just in case you really need it and I definitely think it's a staple especially for the hotter climates I have a couple of things to mention for hair care. The first product that I want to mention that I've been using all year round is the, how do you pronounce this? Chi? Kai? C-H-I? Well, it's the 44 Iron Guard and this is the heat protection spray. I use it every single week, especially once I cut my hair short. My hair doesn't look that great when there's a lot of like flyaway pieces or some pieces that are like wavy and some pieces that are straight. I like to use this to protect my hair because I don't want my hair to get fried from using the straightener so often. I feel like this has done a really good job of protecting my hair. I don't feel like I have as many split ends once I started using this. I know it sounds really bad, but I used to straighten my hair without a heat protection spray, even though I know you're supposed to use it. But I feel like this one has worked a lot better than a lot of the other heat protection sprays that I've used in the past. And I just had to give this one a shout out because it's been a major part of my hair care routine lately. Next up for my hair care routine, this is the Mise en Scene Perfect Serum Golden Morocco Argan Oil. So I don't know if you guys know like the other Moroccan oil brands, they can be a little pricey, but this one is pretty affordable and the most popular hair treatment oil in Korea. I think Blackpink is the ambassador for this brand. I mean, there's a reason why it's so popular. When I use it, I like to use it on damp hair and I just use the tiniest, tiniest amount on the ends of my hair because I have super thin hair so I don't want this to weigh it down. But a little bit goes a long way with this. I'm pretty sure if you have thicker hair or more hair than I do, you can probably use like a full pump, but I just use like half a pump. And I make sure not to put it on the roots of my hair because my hair is already pretty oily in general. So I like to use it on the ends. This makes my hair look very healthy and shinier and also it gives it a nice soft texture especially since I bleached my hair right here my hair used to feel like hay right after I bleached it which I really didn't like but this really helped the texture of my hair a lot they have different versions of this too they also have like a more lightweight version that I use during the summer and I really like that one as well but there's a reason why the original one is the most popular I really recommend this especially if you have bleached hair it's a pretty affordable option for an argan oil and it really helps bring back the softness to the hair strands next hair product that I have is the Mika Perk Up Dry Shampoo Shampooing Sec. I'm almost done with this. I only think I have this much left, but this is a really, really good dry shampoo. Definitely on a different price point than drugstore ones, but this one, I feel like you don't have to use as much of it and it lasts a lot longer. I find that it's pretty similar to the Living Proof one, which makes a lot of sense because I also really like the Living Proof dry shampoo. I think there's like a couple of drugstore ones that I really like, like the Batiste one, but I do think it doesn't last as long as this one. For the Batiste one, I feel like I need to touch up throughout the day, and for this, I don't feel like I need to touch up and the volume lasts all throughout the day. If you have a problem with oily hair or you're trying to do that thing where you don't wash your hair that often but have really thin hair, kind of like myself, it's really hard to go a couple days without washing your hair without your hair looking really shiny and oily. It makes it look like you don't shower. Not the look we're going for. Really recommend a good dry shampoo and especially if you have super thin hair like myself, this one worked really well for me. I have a couple of hair things to mention and the first one is my beloved Tingle Teaser. Before I got this, I actually don't really like brushing my hair because my hair is so thin that I don't really feel like I need to brush it. Like, I can brush it out with my fingers pretty easily, but I realized that brushing your hair is actually good for your hair. Maybe not like all the time, but at least a little bit of stimulation on your scalp is good, especially if you wear dry shampoo. At the end of the day, you should always brush out the dry shampoo in your hair, especially if you're not going to be washing your hair that night. I like how the bristles are pretty flexible and it's not like a super, super packed brush. 
brush which I feel can really pull out a lot of strands of hair and if you have really thin hair that is the last thing you want this is just something that I noticed that I use every single day since I got it and it might work for you guys too who also don't like brushing your hair the next thing that I have to show you are hair rollers so this one is actually specifically for my bangs I usually don't wear my bangs straight down but they're actually supposed to be like see-through bangs and I'm supposed to wear like this okay I'm, I look kind of like a mess right now but you guys get what I mean these are really popular in Korea a lot of people have straight bangs and it helps with the styling of it because it doesn't style itself from what I've learned if you have straight bangs this is a must for styling it it's also pretty easy to use and I like the big size because it doesn't make your bangs super super curly as for this roller this is something that is new to me I literally just found out about it apparently it's for volume at your roots so I have pretty flat hair right here what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to like clip it in the middle and blow dry it so that it keeps your roots up and once it cools down it'll keep it up like that for a good amount of hours depending on your hair I thought this was so smart though I've never seen anything like it it's supposed to give volume to your hair part rollers are a very big thing here that's for sure another thing that I want to mention are silk scrunchies this one is specifically from Lily Silk which I've done a partnership with them in the past a lot of their silk products are very nice and I find that they're a little bit more affordable than other silk brands out there but honestly even if if you don't want to buy like a silk scrunchie maybe like a satin scrunchie I just find that they don't really pull out your hair which is nice and it doesn't cause like a super super big dent in your hair depending on which one you get I guess also it's so cute too also I love how like big it is it's not like super massive but it's definitely like on the bigger side I usually use this when like I'm going to sleep or tie up my hair throughout the house and it doesn't like pull on my hair or tug at it, it doesn't make my hair fall out like a lot of other hair ties just silk or satin products in general like silk or satin hair ties or pillowcases are usually really good for your hair and skin. As per usual, everything that I mentioned in the video will be linked down below. If you guys did like this video, make sure to press the like button. And if you like my content in general, make sure to subscribe for new videos. If you want to see more content outside of YouTube, I do post on TikTok and Instagram. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!